today we're going to be talking about innovative mat work for the arms. Welcome to the Pilates Show, where we explore creative and innovative Pilates tips and techniques to help deepen the skill level of the movement educator while having fun. I'm your host, Casey Marie Hertz, and today we're going to be talking about innovative mat work for the arms. Mat work is like the heart and soul of the Pilates repertoire, and that's where a lot of people get their first introduction into the Pilates studio, whether you're taking mat classes at a gym or in a private studio like we have here at Fusion, it's usually people's first introduction to just get a little bit of a taste of what Pilates is all about. Now, for us um, teachers that have been teaching for a while and teach on all the apparatus, there's so many times in class when you're teaching mat class that you just wish that you could get some of those clients onto a reformer or a Cadillac so that they could really experience uh, different movements with the aid of, say, the moving carriage or the hands and straps and feet and straps. And so what I like to do in my mat classes is, um, if, if I can, build a faux reformer. And it really doesn't take much to do. It takes a, a slidey surface like a, a tile floor or a wood floor like we have here, and a blanket and some other like small props that could be very useful to help cue the body and the movement. But what we want to try to do is emulate the moving carriage on the reformer with this nice blanket here. So again, you're not going to be able to do this on carpet, but tile and wood floor is preferable. So what we want to do is that this is our, our, our kind of, um, I like to call this, this is the boat of the movement, right? And this mat is going to be our dock. Now, arm work can be difficult to get in, in the mat repertoire unless you know how to do push-ups. Four-point kneeling's nice for people, but sometimes you need a little bit of an extra challenge. So what we're gonna be doing is some of the kneeling arms and kneeling abdominal series that you usually do on the reformer right here. So I'm gonna go into my four-point kneeling position. The knees are gonna be about trochanter distance apart from one another. What I'm gonna do now is place my hands on this blanket, and it's nice that these stripes are on the blanket now that I'm looking at it because it helps to get my hands in approximately a parallel position. Now this is where you would have your clients work on their neutral spine and pelvis. So their sitting bones are wide into the side. The elbows, this part of the elbow, is going to turn and look at the legs. You want to find that there's lots of room between the scapula for my rib cage, that back T8 vertebra to go up to the ceiling, and that I have that little bit of length at the low back without tucking the pelvis. Now from here, I'm going to take an inhale. On the exhale, I'm going to keep my heart right between my hands as I reach my knees into the pads that I put underneath them, trying to keep my neutral spine and pelvis and that little puff of air at T8. Then here's the hard part. The exhale, my hands and my heart have to stay in line. My sitting bones reach back and I leverage myself back. It is much harder than it looks. And so again, you want to keep that neutral spine and pelvis, a little bit of a bend at the elbow as I open up the front of the hip joint. Then the hard part is when you come back in. There's no springs to help me here. It's all me. It's my internal spring tension of my deep abdominals, my corset, my shoulder stabilizers, and my knowledge of where my neutral pelvis and spine is in space. Now, on that note, it's very difficult for some people to arrange their shoulder girdle in this motion. So what we can do is take a TheraBand and I'm gonna place it right at that kind of T8 junction. I'm gonna cross it over and I'm gonna grab on here. Get my hair out of the way. So what I've done is I'm giving myself 
a fake floor to reach my thoracic spine into so I can actually get that beautiful tactile cue that's so important for the stabilization of the scapula. And then notice at the front of the shoulder, this is helping to open up my pecs, which aids in external rotation of the upper arm bone. So from here, I go back into this position because we know that we're gonna get our hands in line the heart is gonna stay in between the hands, but most people like to drop into extension here. No, no, no. We're gonna reach the heart center up into the band, keeping the elbows at the band, and we can do the same work here and making sure that the sternum doesn't drop away from the pull of the band, but it almost plumes into it while maintaining the neutral spine and pelvis. Now, another way that you can do this is actually keep the pubic bone and the knees in line. Then from here, this is scapular stability and mobility. The arms reach away, the sitting bones go up. I still have to find my thoracic spine searching out that band. And then with the suction cup of my hands, I pull this right back underneath my heart. Again, much harder than it looks. Many people, We'll try to internally rotate their upper arm bones. Uh-uh, we're gonna bring them right back here. So again, you find your neutral spine and pelvis. You fill out the band on the front body. From here, you hinge at the pelvis and femur. The back of the armpit opens. I keep reaching my energy into the band. On the exhale, suction cup hands bring you right back to center. Now. This is a wonderful tool to use also when you're in a group mat class. If you have anyone, you know, and I don't know, even over two people, it's really hard to get cues to everyone, tactile cues, so using things like TheraBands to help give that sensation and pull and something to reach into to your clients is immensely helpful. And then you can give broader cues to let's say eight people and they all know what it feels like to reach into that band because it's there. Now you're gonna have clients that can't be on their wrists. So what I did is grab one of our handy dandy moon boxes and from here you can go onto the forearms and do the same work without it being too low on this blanket. So again, from here, I like to have my clients not grasp their hands together, but actually keep their hands wide. You can go into that nice opening of the mid back. You can even keep the TheraBand on and you can do the exact same repertoire. Ooh, this is hard. Moving from only the hip. or moving from the arm joint. It's a little bit of a different sensation, but cross train your clients, have them try both if they can. But we always like to have, especially for four point kneeling or any sort of arm work, you wanna have a good option for people with wrist issues to truly experience the work without pain. We have a question from our forum from B. Lee Smith. I have two questions about breathing. Firstly, when we are getting clients to think about their breath throughout their day-to-day -day activities, are we best to encourage them to use belly breathing unless they are exerting themselves, like lifting a heavy box? And the second question, with one long breath, are we keeping the core engaged or letting the belly rise? Or does it just depend on the circumstances? These are really fantastic questions about the breath. And understanding the breath is so vital, not just to the Pilates repertoire, but to life in general. It's the first thing that we do, and it'll be the last thing that we do. Um, I like to think about the breath as, as a tool, not a rule. In the Pilates studio, what we're doing is we're setting up semi-stressful situations for the body to be challenged in organizing and finding ease in breath, no matter what it's doing. That's why we try belly breathing. That's why we figure out our you know, fingertip abdominals breath. What breath helps to activate us? What breath helps to release tension? 
And through all of these different modalities and different ways to breathe, what we're doing is we're practicing for real life situations. So unless a, a client has some severe pain issues or extremely loosely ligamented or have some sort of extenuating circumstances where they really need to be in that core activation phase um, of, of their learning, which is usually in the beginning, you know, yeah, I want them to use that core activating breath to help fire their inner corset and release tension. Now, as you start to really train the body and your clients' bodies get stronger innately, they don't need to be over focusing on that really um, activating breath. We want the breath to, to eventually be very natural. So no matter what the client is doing as they transition to let's say, you know, getting a car seat out of the car, their body goes to that activated breath, that activated sense of, of stability that this beautiful core work that Pilates repertoire gives you. Um, but then also when they're just hanging out and they're at ease and relaxed, they don't need to be tense all the time. They can go into their innate belly breathing, posterior lateral breathing, whatever feels good. So it really does depend on the circumstance. Now for this question about lateral flexion, single lung breath, like in Mermaid, if I have somebody on the mat here or on a reformer doing a loaded lateral flexion mermaid where I want to have this right side of the rib cage open up, but I'm really trying to organize the shoulder girdle underneath, I'm going to be using a lot more musculature, exhale energy to help give support to the bottom part of, of the body to help open up the top and execute it well. Now, if I'm working, let's say, with a, a client with a lateral deviation or scoliosis, and I'm really trying to just um, get them to experience, uh, say, opening up their, their tight side, I might have them propped up on a pillow in side lying in a side bend, and I want them to relax their abdominals so that their diaphragm can fully descend as much as it can and unwind as much as it can to find new new tightnesses within that kind of scoliotic rotational curve. It's deeply relaxing. It'll help to key down any of the excess rigidity that we really want to wipe the slate clean for our clients in side bending. So again, side bending, if you're going into a loaded exercise movement on the mat, or on the reformer, you're gonna to wanna to have more of a core stabilizing breath. But if you're looking for opening, expansion, relaxation, you can absolutely fully propped up in the side bend, do a belly relaxing breath. That's it for today. And if you have a comment or question that you'd like to see answered in an upcoming episode, you can comment below on Facebook, Twitter, or our forum. See you next time and never stop learning. Welcome to the Pilates Show. I'm going to start over because that was really bad. <laughs>